I am presenting Union Gospel Presses Sunday School Lesson Number 5, Sunday, July 3rd, 2022. The lesson is entitled, Haggai Calls for Faithful Service. Lesson text comes from Haggai Chapter 1, Verses 1 through 11. Related scriptures are Leviticus 26, 14 through 45, Deuteronomy 28, 15 through 51, Romans 8, 28 through 39. The place is Jerusalem. The time is 520 BC. We, when we see believers that are in rebellion to God's word, God may call us to encourage or even rebuke them. That was the case with Haggai. This can be a very difficult thing for servants of God to do because they will be tempted to let their fear of man overcome them. But our faithfulness to God's word and our commitment to his church must supersede our fears. Because of the completeness of the word of God, we can be sure he has declared himself on what he expects, expects us to do in obedience to him. You may not stop and think of what God expects you to do, but the part of wisdom is, as Haggai said repeatedly, to consider your ways, God blesses us when we obey. He, he may chastise us when we do not. Today's aim, facts, to see clearly how God used Haggai to rebuke his people and help them return to him. Principle, to show that God's leading and his timing are correct and appropriate and that there are consequences to our failure to obey. Application, to overcome our fears to share the, to share the will of God with others and avoid procrastinating in our obedience to him. Illustrating the lesson. We lose much, if not all, of our efforts when we fail to put the Lord first. Practical points. One, it is important not only to start God's work, but also to finish it. Haggai 1.1, 1, 1, Ezra 3.18-13. Two, man's excuses may fool others, but never God. Haggai 1, 2. Three, our actions rather than our words are the best indicator of our priorities. Verses 3 through 4. Four, the wise man regularly examines his actions, priorities, and loyalties. Verses 5 through 6. Five, true repentance requires full obedience. Verses 7 through 8. Six, God's people should expect God's discipline when they disobey. Haggai 1, 9 through 11, Proverbs 3, 12, Hebrews 12, 6. Golden text. Then came the word of the Lord by, prophet, by Haggai the prophet, saying, It is time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses, and this house lay waste. Haggai 1, Three through four. Today we have two lesson outlines. The first is the people's attitude, Haggai 1, 1 through 6. The second is God's response to their attitude, Haggai 1, 7 through 11. Introduction. Chuck Swindoll relates in C.S. Lewis in the screw tape letter says that one day Satan and his imps were planning their strategy. One demon said, I've got a plan, master. I'll tell them there's no heaven. The devil responded, ah, they'll never believe that. This book of truth is full of messages about the hope of heaven through sins forgiven. They won't believe that. They know there's a glory, a glory yet future. On the other side of the room, another says, I've got a plan. I'll tell them there's no hell. No good, he says. Jesus, while he was on earth, talked more of hell than of heaven. And one brilliant little imp in the back stood up and said, Then I know the answer. I'll just tell them there's no hurry. And he's the one Satan chose. The people's attitude. Haggai 1, 1. 
then in the second year of King Darius, the sixth month, in the first day of the month, came the word of the Lord by Haggai, the prophet, unto Zerubbabel, the son of Shutael, governor of Judah, and to Josiah, the son of Josedek, the high priest, saying, verse 2, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, The people say, the time is not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. Verse 3. Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying, Verse 4. It is time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses, and this house lay waste. Verse 5. Now therefore thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Verse 6. Ye have sown much, and bring in little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it into a bag with holes. A false view of timing. Haggai 1, 1 through 2. As we discussed last week, Judah had been taken captive by Babylon in 586 BC, which was the last of three deportations. Eventually, there were three returns, with the first being led by Zerubbabel, accompanied by the priest Jos 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 Josiah. For these two leaders, the first priority was the reestablishment of the worship of Yahweh, Ezra 3. Their ritual project was the rebuilding of the temple in Jerusalem. When the foundation had been laid, there was a mixture of emotions with great joy in some, and some sadness in others, verses 12 through 13. It was only a short time until the opposition from local enemies began. Eventually, following correspondence between these adversaries and King Artaxerxes, the construction work on the temple ceased, Ezra 4:24. It was not until the coming forth of the prophets Haggai and Zechariah some 16 years later that the work began once again and the temple was completed. 5, 1 through 2, 6, 14 through 15. Our lesson text from the book of Haggai somewhat parallels last week's text and shows us how Haggai boldly motivated God's people to complete the work began many years earlier. In this brief book, we find four messages from the prophet, with this week's text being the first. It was the sixth month of, of Darius' second year. As we learned last week, it was after Darius' approval of the building of the temple finally allowed the Jews to finish God's work. This approval... This approval allowed the people to continue with, with Haggai, what Haggai had encouraged. God worked through, through Darius, and now he would work through Haggai to bring his people to repentance. Haggai's challenge had begun with the quotation of an assertion made by those who were living in Jerusalem and not doing anything about the temple. Haggai specifically addressed Jerubabel, the, civic, the civil leader, and Josiah, the high priest, pointing out that the people were using excuses for not getting back to the building project. They were claiming the timing was not yet right for doing so. Haggai made it clear that the message from God held a divine rebuke of his people and showed his displeasure with them. Five times we read in this book that the word of the Lord came to his people. This was the first time a message had come to his people through a prophet since their return from the Babylonian captivity. A question about their timing. Haggai 1, 3 through 4. It is not amazing that some people attribute their lack of action to God's leading. When the people said it was not yet the right time to work on the temple, they were in reality using somewhat pious sounding reasoning as an excuse for their unwillingness or laziness concerning the temple. The truth was that they had replaced the priority of God's work with personal preferences regarding their own projects. 
God's work had taken second place to their own desires. In reality, many of the people had little time for the things of God. Moreover, in the following verses, Haggai related that, that they selfishly would rather spend their money on lavish homes than the house of God. They showed no commitment to spiritual things. What they had decided upon their return, namely the priority of the worship of God above everything else, had been squelched because of the opposition they had faced. Haggai was now challenging them to rethink their priorities. While they claimed the time was not right for the working of the temple, they were at the same time building themselves lavish homes. Haggai presented a question that, like the statement he had just uttered, had come from the Lord of hosts. It is time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses, and this house lay waste. Haggai, Haggai 1, 4. The key word is sealed. The Hebrew word refers to interior paneling such as wainscoting, that is, wooden panels lining the walls of the rooms of their houses. Paneled houses were evidence of luxury. Kiel and Deserish commented with this question, the prophet cuts off all excuse. On the ground that the circumstances of the time and the opposition under which they suffered did not permit of the building of the temple. If they themselves lived comfortably in wind-scotted houses, their civil and political condition could not be so oppressive that they could find it that a sufficient excuse for neglecting the temple to build the temple. A challenge to rethink their timing. Haggai 1, 5 through 6. Through Haggai, the Lord repeatedly admonished the people of Judah. Consider your ways, 1, 5, 7, 2, 15, 18, twice. A woodenly literal rendering of this phrase reads, Set your heart upon your ways, that is, on the road you have chosen to travel. They needed to think seriously about their thoughts and lack of action. It was a matter of utmost importance to God. Therefore, they needed to reevaluate carefully and make whatever changes were necessary to get in line with his purpose. If they looked at the reality of their circumstances, they would see that God was withholding blessings from them. They needed to reappraise their perverted priorities and give preeminence to God in their relationship with him. What they had done was deplorable, and it was also fruitless. They had been doing the right things in order to provide for themselves, but they had not been experiencing the results they were expecting from their labors. They sowed plenty of seed to have good crops, but they were not getting those good crops. They were able to eat regularly, but it was never sufficient. They they were able to drink regularly, but, they, but there was not enough to satisfy them. They had clothing, but it was not enough to totally provide the covering they needed in order to be warm and comfortable. The money they earned never seemed enough to meet all their needs and certainly not enough to provide anything extra. The Lord compared the situation to putting money in a bag with holes in it. It allowed the money to fall through and disappear. All this was evidence of his displeasure and their need to rearrange the priorities of their lives. While God today often works differently from the way he did in Old Testament times, sometimes we should examine our priorities when things are going badly. Perhaps God withholds blessings from us at times when we have allowed something other than him to become the top priority in our lives. God's response to their attitude. Verse 7. Thus said the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Verse 8. Go up to the mountain and bring wood and build the house and I will go take pleasure in it 
and I will be glorified, saith the Lord. Verse 9. Ye looked for much, and lo, it came to little. And when ye brought it home, I did blow upon it. Why, saith the Lord of hosts, because of mine house that is waste, and ye run every man into his own house. Verse 10. Therefore the heaven over you is stayed from dew, and the earth is stayed from her fruit. Verse 11. And I called for a drought upon the land, and upon the mountains, and upon the corn, and upon the new wine, and upon the oil, and upon that which the ground bringeth forth, and upon men, and upon cattle, and upon all the labor of the hands. God's will declared. Haggai 1, 7 through 8. For the second time, God told the people to consider their ways. They needed to reflect deeply on the way they had been handling the most important thing in life, specifically accomplishing God's will for them. Perhaps the implication in this repeated challenge to consider their ways was indirectly a call for them to repent. They had done everything they could to care for their own desires while leaving the rebuilding of the temple completely inactive. Things were out of order for them. Upon issuing the second challenge to consider what they were doing, God gave them specific instructions to follow that would enable them to fulfill his will in this matter. The instructions were simple and concise. They were to go up into the mountains, bring wood from there down into the city, and use it for the rebuilding of the temple. We cannot help wondering why they had to get wood from the mountains since King Cyrus of Persia had originally authorized getting wood from Sidon and Tyre, Ezra 3.7. Had they used up that provision of wood on their own houses? In light of these messages from Haggai at this time, it is easy to speculate that this is what happened. Now they would have to use their own forests. God stated that their obedience to these instructions would give him pleasure and glorify him. He challenged them, gave them clear instructions for correcting what was wrong, and promised his pleasure in their obedience. What a complete message this was from the Lord of hosts for his people Judah. It was meant to inspire activity. It is good to know that when we get off track in life, God is willing to reach out and help us correct our direction. It is also good when we pay attention and respond properly. When we get back in line with his will and purpose, we please him and will receive his approval and blessings. God chastising explained. Haggai 1.9 We often find it easier to adjust our lives to God's will when we can understand exactly why we need to change things and what is expected of us. Sometimes we sense God leading us in a direction without giving us clear indications as to why he is doing so. That requires a deeper level of faith on our part. When we follow such leading, we grow in our understanding of him and his ways. For the people of Judah, God gave a clear explanation of why he wanted things to be different. What God had said through his prophet earlier, Haggai, hey one six. He explained here again, verse 9, even though they had been faithful and diligent in preparing their crops and doing their work to earn wages, their expectations for return were not being met. He said they were eagerly looking for much, but instead of a rich harvest, he said they were getting little. Their level of increase was not measuring up to what they needed and hoped for. God then added that what little increase they did realize, he blew away. The picture is of someone blowing on something and scattering it all around. It describes how the little they were getting was being even less effective in meeting their needs than it normally would, should have been. God asked the question they probably had on their minds, why? He answered by stating clearly that the reason he was actively moving against them was the ruined condition of his house. There is an empathetic contrast between the house of the Lord that lay in ruins and the busyness of the people in caring for their houses. 
God left no room for doubt about why he was withholding his blessings upon these people. They had put all their attention and effort into their own houses while neglecting his. It was clear that their only course of action was to get busy on the temple. God's actions detailed. Haggai 1, 10 through 11. There follows quite an extensive list of hardships because of God's displeasure with his people. Almost everything important to them was being negatively affected. God was hitting them where it would hurt them the most because he wanted to get their attention and persuade them to change. The heavens were not sending dew upon the land. The earth was not producing fruit and a divinely ceased drop was affecting many things important to the people. Economic catastrophe resulting from God's withholding of the summer dew was the price for their disobedience. Deuteronomy 7.13 Grain, wine, and oil were the primary crops of the land. Cattle also languished because of the absence of spiritual health. What was promised to them if they were obedient can be seen in Deuteronomy 7.13-14. The list includes the things that now were examples of suffering. And he will love thee and bless thee and multiply thee. He will also bless the fruit of thy womb and the fruit of thy land, thy corn and thy wine and thine oil, the increase of thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep in the land which he swear unto thy fathers to give thee. Thou shalt be blessed above all people. There shall not be male nor female barren among you or among your cattle. On the other hand, Joel 1, 18, 20 describes the terrible conditions that God would bring upon his people if they stopped doing what he asked of them. They were currently experiencing all that God had warned them about. They had been looking out for their own interests and ignoring the things that would honor God long enough. Questions. One. At one point in Judah's history did Haggai minister. <clears throat> Two. The temple was left in incomplete condition. Why did the people of Judah say this was okay? Three, what did Haggai say they were viewing as their first priority instead of rebuilding the temple? Four, what phrase did Haggai use several times in challenging the people to rethink priorities? Five, what circumstances showed that God was not blessing them? Six, how did God compare their lack to a money bag? Seven, what did God specifically tell them to do about their situation? Eight, how did God explain the chastising they were getting from him? Nine, what empathetic contrast explained their wrongdoing? Ten, what specific things had God done to get their attention? This concludes the Sunday School lesson for Sunday, July 3rd, 2022. Thank you for listening. God bless.